My story is called The Dogda's Harp, and it comes to us from Celtic tradition and the island of Ireland. So today, even today, the harp is the symbol of Ireland. It's one of its national symbols. And in the old Druids, it was once said that for a master, for a harp master to claim that role, they would need to be able to play a song that would make someone cry. They would need to play a song that could make people laugh, and they would need to play a song that could put people to sleep. The harp is very important in this story, but the story goes beyond even just the Celtic times in Ireland. It goes to a time when there were other peoples on the island. And these people were called Fomorians, and the Fomorians were very warrior-like, and they had iron and gold-tipped spears to fight with. And the other people on the island were called the Tuatha de Danann, and they were more basic in their, their weaponry, and they had other things though. And that great chieftain was named the Dagda. And the Dagda might not have had iron tipped spears or gold tipped spears, but he had other enchantments that they brought to the island with them. Now in the roundhouse of the Dagda, all of the people could meet within his tribe, in his clan. And the first of his blessings was a giant cauldron called the, the Cauldron of Plenty. And the Cauldron of Plenty was said that it could feed as many people as sat around it, that they would never go without within the Dagda's Hall. The second of his tools was a club. And the club he carried with him into battle. And the club was said to be able to strike down as many men that were around him. But yet as he turned it to the other side, it could restore life again. And there was another of the Dagda's tools that he used, and it was the harp. But the Dagda's harp was nothing like we'd ever seen. The Dagda's harp was made of the finest oak, and it was encrusted with jewels. It was a thing of beauty to the eye, but even more, it was a thing of beauty to the ear. And after battle, after the hard times, the wounds of these people coming back, the Dagda would play upon the harp, and the people would forget their wounds the people would forget their pain and they would know peace. Now as things would have it, war broke out again, battles always did. And the Dagda and his warriors went off to fight in battle. And when they did, they left the roundhouse unprotected. And some of the Fomorian chieftains realized this and they decided they were going to, to strike a blow to the Dagda and his people. So the Fomorian snuck in to the roundhouse and they found Dagda's harp. They took it down from the wall and they knew that there would be problems. There would be more battles because of this. So they collected up their families, they collected up their children, they collected up their own warriors, and they decided to set off. And the Fomorians marched on and on through the woods 
into unknown areas of the island until all of a sudden they came upon was a great hall, but it had been abandoned. They don't know who made the hall, but it would be perfect. Nobody would ever find them there. Nobody obviously was looking for it. It was empty. And it stood tall. And there were great pillars and posts along the way. It was obviously a great hall of some chieftain at some point in time, but but whoever these people were, they were gone. And there was a fire pit. So they started up a fire. They hunted. They found food. And they began to celebrate. Celebrating the blow that they felt that they brought to the Dagda. And as they were celebrating and dancing, and they hung the Dagda's hop above the high seat within this hall as a trophy, and they laughed. And as they were dancing and singing through the night, suddenly there was a disturbance at the door and they were all looking around. Everybody was there. And the doors were slammed open. And there standing there was the Dagda and his warriors. And the Dagda looked at them with cold eyes, stared into each and every one of them. And before they could pick up their weapons to go off and fight, the Dagda called to his harp, harp, come to me. The harp knew its master. It flew through the air with the fastest steed, knocking over Fomorians as it went by. And once it had hit the Dagda's hands, the Dagda played three chords. The Dagda played three songs. The Dagda began to play, and it was the most mournful tune, and it brought sadness, and he played on, and the women and the children began to scream and cry. The men in the hall began to turn their heads in shame that they'd allow this to happen, and the Dagda continued to play. And just as the Fomorians were ready to pick up their weapons again, the Dagda struck his harp. And he played a joyful tune. And he played and he played and the Fomorians began to laugh and to dance. But it wasn't a normal laughter. It was that laughter that causes pain in your sides because you can't stop. They dropped their weapons. They didn't know what to do. And again, for the third time, the Dagda struck his harp. And this time, it was the softest of sounds. And he played, and he played. And as he played a song of sleep, the Fomorians began to fall in their places fall back in their chairs, fall to the ground, sound asleep. Now, the warriors of Dagda looked to him. What should they do next? But the Dagda motioned for silence, and they moved along. They traveled back to their own homeland with the harp now placed back in its rightful place alongside the Dagda. <laughs>